Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Coming up on Harvest, Brian Bush is standing by with the latest on the push toward the center of Mosul by Iraqi forces. And a reminder to you that Prayer Line is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Give us a call during the show if you need prayer. That number is 1-800-365-3732. Pastor Charles will join us a little later on during the show to pray for you. And it is the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. It was in 19. 41, December 7th, that uh, the Japanese attacked the naval base there in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, and uh, cost some Americans, like 3,700 Americans lost their lives during that time. Right. And mm -hmm. it also thrust us into World War II. Uh, an amazing day. I was reading a story today. My first elementary school principal, Mr. Walker, mm -hmm. was uh, 12 years old when Pearl Harbor was attacked. And he says... I remember hearing about it on the radio, and then the next day he was sitting on the front porch and he saw the Western Union telegram go to the family across the street mm. because they had a son who mm -hmm. was on board who mm -hmm. died in Pearl Harbor. And I've been to the Arizona Memorial. It is a very moving and touching experience, and certainly it is something that not only Americans should never forget, but the world should never forget. We should do all things that we can to try to avoid such conflict. That's right. You know, yesterday you announced uh, during World News that the mm -hmm. Prime Minister of Japan said he would not apologize for what right. happened. And, and he's actually taking some flack from, mm -hmm. of all places, the Chinese government, who mm -hmm. is kind of saying, you know, you really should, and, and, and is accusing Japan of revisionist history. And, of course, it's been a controversy for years of how this has been portrayed in the history books, the, the problems that led up to the bombing of Pearl Harbor, but uh, certainly a, a very difficult day for Americans and one that we should reflect upon. And there you see the Arizona yeah. Memorial over the USS Arizona, the battleship that's still submerged, still leaking oil there in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And as President Roosevelt said, a day that will live on in infamy. He was listening to a uh, an interview with one of the survivors, the remaining survivors of USS Arizona, and I think there may be, we were discussing this yesterday, I don't know if you had an opportunity to look it up, but around 1,500 uh, remaining survivors from uh, Pearl Harbor, and uh, he was just recounting that day. I think there were 1,198 men that died uh, on that ship, and he was one of the, one of the, the handful uh, that survived. But. Uh, Again, as we've, as we've shared, you know, a day that must be remembered and must be considered because if we fail to consider history, we are doomed to, to, to re repeat it. I don't know if either of you have seen the movie Hacksaw Ridge. I have not, no, but not I've, I've been told that it's absolutely a, powerful and really mm -hmm. brings to light uh, a story of, uh, a true story, uh, and one that's representative of so many of just the courage it took and the courage that was displayed uh, by the, uh, the young men who volunteered and who willingly accepted serving in the military uh, after the bombing of, of Pearl Harbor, uh, as well as the families and, and the women uh, and the men that had to stay behind uh, to not just keep this nation going, but to uh, put their hand to the plow to work for the, the, the soldiers and the troops in the military that were fighting overseas. Many of those World War II veterans are visiting the sites there and uh, so it's just always good for us to be grateful as you said uh, that we don't repeat the same history that was before us. You know switching gears a little bit um, we talked yesterday you wanted to know who time would select it as, as its person has of it the been year. It has been revealed. I think you didn't get the reveal because you were driving in okay. um, to work. But it was Don it is Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Uh -huh. And I think whether you like President elect Trump or you do not like him, um, he it is well deserved. I mean unconventional just in every way and just swept uh, uh, politics off its sweet now. Uh, and specifically with time uh, the man of the year or the person of the of year, the excuse year. me. Uh, as we shared yesterday, that's not necessarily a, a positive nor negative. It just is sign no, that's signifying right. the person who basically mm -hmm. maybe made the biggest impact. Impact yeah. and yeah. have the influence that he had during yeah. the election. I yeah. think it was well deserved. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday, not only his influence on the United States, but what it's kind of done to the world stage as well with the, the populist effect. movement. Mm -hmm. That's right. Hey, we want to know your thoughts. We want to connect with you. Share them with us on Facebook and Twitter and at live at lacy.com. World News begins after this.
It is Wednesday, December 7th, 2016, and here's what's happening in your world. President-elect Donald Trump officially announced he will nominate retired Marine General James Mattis to be his defense secretary. Mattis briefly addressed a crowd in Fayetteville, North Carolina last night, thanking Trump for the nomination. I'm grateful for the opportunity to return to our troops, their families, the civilians of the Department of Defense, because I know how committed they are and devoted they are to the defense of our country, the defense of our Constitution. Mattis will require a congressional waiver to accept the post since he has not been out of uniform for the required seven years. In Aleppo, a team of Russian sappers is recovering explosives in areas reclaimed from rebels. The Russian mine clearance unit used a dog to help locate explosive devices, and the unit commander says most appeared to be encased within plastic water bottles. The Syrian government and Russia have rejected a ceasefire in the war-torn city, keeping up the military offensive amid rebel retreats and the massive displacement of Aleppo civilians. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg says the security situation in Ukraine remains serious. He made the remarks ahead of a meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Commission today. NATO allies continue to support Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, and we support reforms that are essential for a better future for the people of Ukraine. The NATO chief said the ceasefire in Ukraine is being violated daily. He said heavy weapons have not been withdrawn from the conflict zone as required by the Minsk peace agreement. China accused Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen of seeking to use a planned visit to the U.S. to score diplomatic points. China, which claims Taiwan is a breakaway province, objects to any nation having formal contact with its government. Foreign Ministry spokesman Liu Kang also committed on or commented on reports that Iowa Governor Terry Branstad has accepted an offer to be the next ambassador to China, saying he's an old friend of the Chinese people. Branstad first met China's President Xi Jinping in 1985. And Thailand's Prime Minister warns the BBC could be prosecuted if an online report about the country's new king, published by its Thai language service, is found to have violated the law safeguarding the monarchy's reputation. BBC Thai caused a stir when it published a profile of King Maha Vajira Longkorn touching on controversial aspects of his background. The story included details of three of his marriages that ended in divorce and other material that cannot be published without legal risk. Thailand has a strict law against insulting the monarchy that carries a penalty of three to 15 years in prison. No charges have been filed against the BBC yet. Coming up later, Brian Bush has the latest news from Israel, and we have much more to come on this edition of Harvest. Stay tuned. We want to help you live and pray intentionally in 2017 by sending you one of our beautiful and functional LaCie Broadcasting Personal Prayer Diary and Daily Planners. Each week in the diary, there's a selected scripture and a chosen country to aid you in praying while you plan your own daily prayers and activities. To get yours, call 1-800-365-3732 and make a minimum gift of just $19. The demand is high and they'll go quickly, so call today, 1-800-365-3732. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to thy word. The C Broadcasting is dedicated to getting thousands of free Bibles into the hands of young people around the world this year. Will you help? Call 1-800-365-3732 today. Today is your day. This is your moment. Life is calling. It's time to get back that extra spark that you've been missing, and it's simple with Mineral Concentrate, an all-natural trace mineral product designed to promote energy and focus without sugar nor caffeine. Call 1-800-965-2345 or log on to mhclife.com. Today is your day. It's time for life. If you are tired of letting your past and other people control you, our guest today has returned with help. Stephen Arterburn is the founder of New Life Ministries, a broadcast counseling and treatment ministry, and he's also the host of the hugely popular talk show, New Life Live, and the author of the hugely successful book, Every Man's Battle. Wow, I got it all out. You Welcome did. back to oh, the Harvest Show, it's Steve. wonderful to be here. Thank so you. So we're talking about take back your life, yeah. take your life back. Right. That means someone had to take it from you or something. Mm -hmm. So you're saying we allow the past and people to take what God has given to us. And what's the first step in regaining control of your life? Well, you know, I think, uh, first of all, we're afraid 
for people to know the real us. Mm -hmm. So just like Adam and Eve, you know, they put on the fig leaf and, you know, tried to act like no problem. But I think our job as Christians is to find a way to be authentic and open because that says to other people, I don't have to be perfect to join your crowd. Mm -hmm. But if I'm trying to act like I've got it all together, when somebody says to me, I love you, immediately I'm going to think, yeah, but if if they only knew me, they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So I never get to experience love from other people. I always, I, I just wash it away. And if I don't experience love from other believers, then I don't feel God's love. Mm -hmm. And if you look out there in the Christian world, how many people believe in God, believe in Christ, and they don't feel loved by God? Mm -hmm. They think God's angry at them. They think he's disappointed. Mm -hmm. And so that's because you're living this false self. So we've tried to help people to let's get rid of that false self mm -hmm. and let's be open. When I was in seminary, you know, I felt God calling me to be a revealer of the truth about my life. And so everything I've ever done, I've tried to write about it somewhere in a book. And I have a daughter who's 25 and people would say, don't write that stuff in there. She'll see that and use it as an excuse to do the same stuff. And I said, you know what? If Madeline needs an excuse mm -hmm. to do, she'll find mm -hmm. something else. Well, she, she, I mean, she graduated from high school, no drugs, no alcohol, no sex. Mm -hmm. And knew everything there was about me. We shouldn't be so afraid to be open with our kids about mm -hmm. our, our failures and what we did to come back. So the first step really in taking your life back is let's be honest. I mean, really, let's mm -hmm. just be honest about right. who we are and not, not fake it. And then the second thing is, why don't we uh, do what James 5.16 says? Confess your sins to one another, pray for each other that you might be healed. Who's out there confessing their sins to other people? Well, people in recovery groups and things like that are doing it. But a lot of times in church, it's the last thing that we do. So oh, we no. better mm -hmm. find, I mean, that's the most specific verse I know on healing. Mm -hmm. In secrecy, we get sicker. In openness and honesty and confession, that's where healing takes place. So let's be honest with ourselves and let's open up to another person. But when you speak about recovery, we automatically think of drug addiction, we think of alcoholism, yeah. we mm -hmm. think of pornography. Right. But it's not just those people that are bound by those things that no. need recovery. Well, how many people are so uh, saddled by the guilt and shame of a past they can't change or a future they can't predict or the present that they're really angry about because they're not in control. So you can be controlled by fear, mm -hmm. shame, uh, rage, anger, any of these kinds of things. You don't, you don't have to go the full realm of addiction mm -hmm. to say, you know what, there's something that really owns me. And for a lot of people, it's resentment and bitterness toward another person. And you've got to let God help you resolve that. So that isn't a big chunk of who you are anymore. It's who you used to be. You also talk about the story of the prodigal son. Oh, yeah. An excellent story to make your point. Right. What are the points that you bring out? Well, prodigal son is really much more, I think, about the elder brother than mm -hmm. the prodigal son. Yes, there's this wonderful image of the prodigal son being accepted back by the father. And of course, when Rembrandt did the classic painting, when he painted one hand, he used a male uh, model for that hand. For the other, he used a female model. So if you look at the painting, God or the father has his hands on the back of this boy. One looks like a woman, the grace of God, the other a strong hand, which is the power of God. But here's the elder brother saying, man, I'm better than him. I, you know, and God, uh, I tell you, if you, you know, can accept him, well, surely you love what I'm doing. We ought to have a banquet for me. I'm the one that's been doing everything right. Well, in the book, we talk about the, the young boy was acting out when he rebelled. The elder brother is acting in, which we see much more in the church. Mm -hmm. You're not doing the w really bad stuff and all that, but you're looking down on people. You're judging people. You're saying, I'm better than them. Uh, just like in scripture, you know, thank God I'm not like him, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what the elder brother, and so we've got an elder brother in all of us that we, we got to get him, uh, you know, in, in the process of loving, connecting, and enjoying life versus I'm following these rules and I think you better recognize how great I am or you've got the problem. So no looking down on the other folks. Talk about your background in counseling because, you know, I could, I should have set the stage for that because yeah. you know what you're talking about. You've 
interviewed <laughs> right. countless people. You've yeah. um, counseled with counsel countless people well, as well. Well, I started uh, working in a psychiatric hospital. I uh, was going to seminary, and I said, I want to go to work in a psych hospital. The only job I could get was cleaning toilets. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be uh, with people that had really come to the end of themselves. And from there, you know, I became a counselor and then I started New Life, which, you know, we have about 1,500 Christian counselors around the world. And, you know, it's all about taking biblical principles and how do we apply them to our lives. It's not about what did Sigmund Freud say and how do we mm -hmm. work with it. No, it's how do we practically help a person integrate that into their lives. And I have been so blessed because no one has needed counseling more than me so I and, and I still have it some people say you ought to go more often but uh, I, I was there last night I was with my counselor last night and so there's insight that we can get when we go sit down with somebody that really knows what they're doing and then we can experience the freedom that God promises us so many people don't have an abundant life or a blessed life and they're going where is this thing they're talking about where it's so great to be a Christian well, I'm going to tell you it's there, but you're going to have to do some work. And just asking God to get rid of right. everything, that's not work. So emphasize mm -hmm. that. If I've got a cord that's holding me back in my mm -hmm. life, how do I cut that cord yeah. and move forward? Well, first you've got to say, I don't, I don't want that cord anymore. And that's not helping me. And so then I really, I think the, the first step is to get some help, sit down with somebody. It might be a pastor might be a counselor, could be a psychiatrist, it, it could be so extreme. Because we don't just have emotional or spiritual problems. You know, some people are born with a, a chemistry that's really messed up or a brain that doesn't work right and you need to get extreme professional help. Don't think that that's a weakness, that's a strength. When you come to that point where you say, I'm willing to do whatever it takes, that willingness. You know, a lot of people, they know they have a problem or they're aware they have a problem but they're not willing. And I, you know, I like to say, when you go to Outback Steakhouse, you know those deep fried onion blossoms are gonna kill you. <laughs> they got defibrillators to help you if you do. And if they can't take you out front, they'll take you out back. And that's called Outback Steakhouse. Well, anyway, you gotta decide, I'm not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. My life, my health is more important. And that's what we have to do. The willingness to do the tough thing mm -hmm. is what separates folks that are taking their life back or those that are stuck in the, in the back sludge of all that that they've been through. But there's an entire segment of the body of Christ in the body of Christ, um, groups of people who do not believe, like, you know, it's, it's a true. sin to go get counseling. Uh, we right. can just be healed and delivered and right. set free, you know. And I you know a, what I say to them? What, that's what I how, wanted to know. How, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> now, now just sit back and that's you're right. saying nobody needs it. But really, how's it going? How's it going with your children? Are you connected mm -hmm. to your mm -hmm. children? Or have you used scripture, God, and the church as an excuse to separate from other people. And I got to tell you, some people are saying a lot of spiritual things. They just don't want to face the reality about themselves. That's really hard work. They're just uninformed. And I think if they would ever really understand how committed and dedicated a Christian counselor is, right. they just have a different gift than a Christian preacher. Mm -hmm. A preacher goes and learns how to preach better and a counselor goes, learns how to develop some insight into you to help you. Steve, we have one minute left. Would you look into your camera sure. and just encourage people and yeah. let them know that there is help and they, they can take back their life? Well, I tell you, if you're just willing to do a little bit of work, it could change everything for you. And I'm hoping and I'm praying that maybe today you would decide, okay, I want to take my life back. I don't want this guilt or shame or resentment to control me. And uh, if, if you do, you can call us at, at uh, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll help you or newlife.com or you can call this station right here in this program. But don't just do the same old stuff and expect that life is going to get better. Amen. To connect with Stephen Arta Brown, go to TakeYourLifeBack.tv or go to Harvest-TV.com for a link to both projects. It's called Take Your Life Back. That's the book. And here is the workbook. Yeah. Harvest will continue in just a moment. Since 2000, Live from Studio B has become an intimate venue for over 250 of today's most recognizable and up-and-coming Christian artists. Oh, God, and you have made me new. 
Visit livefromstudioB.com for performance schedules along with archive shows ready to be streamed. Live from Studio B, up close and personal with your favorite Christian artists. You know, there are so few things in this world that you can count on anymore, especially when it comes to our financial future and planning for retirement. We live in a dynamic world defined by change, but when it comes to securing our retirement income, we want stability, not uncertainty. And that's why I consistently talk about charitable gift annuities. A gift annuity provides a safe and steady income stream which is fixed for life, and you are investing into changing lives for Jesus Christ at the same time. If you are over 49 and a half years of age and you have at least $10,000 in a savings account or CD, call us today. Let us show you how you can have at least one form of retirement income that you can count on. When you lay up your treasure in heaven, you can count on it being there waiting for you. So call us today and let us help you have a secure income for the rest of your life. Hello everyone, Syrian rebels have now reportedly left their last areas in Aleppo's old city. Government forces are advancing through eastern Aleppo with estimates saying that up to two thirds of the rebel areas are now in government control. Tens of thousands of civilians have been displaced and tens of thousands of others are still trapped in the last of the rebel held districts. Libyan forces now control Sirt, the last stronghold of Islamic State in Libya. Pro-unity government fighters are sweeping areas searching for the jihadists. This is a further blow to the extremist group who routinely portrayed the area of Sirt as Islamic State's main base outside of Syria and Iraq in its propaganda. In the fight for Mosul, after more than a month of close quarter combat with Islamic State on the southeastern fringes of the city, Iraqi army units are now reportedly surging towards the center. Troops are said to be less than three-fourths of a mile from the Tigris River, which runs through the center of the city. The Iraqis hope to advance to the southernmost of five bridges that span the Tigris, four of which have been destroyed. And lastly, Israelis in Tel Aviv were amused to find a 15-foot golden statue of Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu erected near to where Prime Minister Itzhak Habin had been assassinated by a Jewish settler. It seems that the statue has been inspired by other statues of autocratic leaders, such as Chairman Mao of China. Some compared it to the biblical golden calf worshipped by the children of Israel. Social media chimed in calling for a topple BB party and the statue was pulled down after a few hours. Friends, that's a wrap of your news from here in the Middle East. The Harvest Show is going to continue right after this. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my update and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. What if I told you that there's a place full of loved ones' photos that gets prayed for regularly? Prayer offers a direct line to God, so who couldn't use a little more of it? Getting yourself or your loved ones on this wall is as easy as click and send. The chapel at La Cie Prayer Line has a wall of love that's waiting to be filled up. Just email your pictures to prayer at lacie.com. That's it. Our chapel has been a focal point for prayer for the last 18 years. Let our prayer team pray for you. We'd appreciate it if you give us a call anytime you've got a need. Our prayer team really does want to pray for you and with you. You can connect with La Cie Prayer Line, 1-800-365-3732. is toll-free number here in the United States, prayer at lacie.com. That's the email address, great way to connect as well. 
And uh, for those of you watching overseas, plus one, five, seven, four, two, nine, one, one, zero, one, zero. Pastor Charles joining us now. We've got some prayer requests today, Pastor. Prayer requests, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, from all around the world, we're getting them on the phones, but I have a few here that I'd like to mention. Like, for instance, Latrice in Indiana. Latrice calls us and says that she has acid reflux and wants God to heal her. And then Sam down in Louisiana, Sam says, uh, please pray for my friend Elmo who has just lost his dad in a very short time after lost his mom as oh, well. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Says being uh, the only child, you know, he's kind of confused right now. But uh, I believe after we talk with him on the prayer line line that, that he's a lot better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, we informed him that he could call us back. I was going to just ask to. you that. Can mm -hmm. people call back? Yep. And, and I would imagine that they do. They do. They do. And, uh, and a lot of them call back for good reason, uh, such as, as Sam here. And then we have John in Wisconsin. John says, my wife has cancer in the colon and um, had an infection in her digestive tract. And she believes that God can indeed heal her. Amen. We've got about a minute left, Pastor Charles. If you would lead us in prayer, and for those of you watching right now, uh, many healing requests coming in. So if you're standing in the need of prayer for healing, just extend your faith as we extend ours. Yes, yes. Father, in the name of Jesus and the power of his blood today, we thank you, Lord God, for those ones who are indeed trusting in prayer line. But we know in actuality, Lord God, they're trusting in you. But we're touching and agreeing along with them, Lord God, for their healing. And we're asking you, Lord, to move by your power. Father, in the name of your son right now, Lord God, we just speak a well word over each and every one who is needing a healing today, deliverance in their lives, and salvations in their homes. And we give you the honor and the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We say amen to that. Thank yes. you so much for joining us here today on The Harvest Show. We look forward to sharing the good news with you again tomorrow. There's only one place on earth where Jesus walked, where Jesus ministered, only one place where he calmed the sea, and one place where he conquered death. And you can see it for yourself with LaSea Tours. I want to invite you to come and experience the Bible on a life-changing pilgrimage to the Holy Land, February 14th through the 23rd. You know the story, now witness it for yourself. Call the number on the screen or go online to register for the trip of a lifetime. We all would like to wish you and your families a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from LaCie Broadcasting.